the brains of this PSS shaft seal. We're tightening the Sigma drive. It's like changing a tire. You just have to go around in a star pack. I measured it. Oh How many my times? God. Subscribe to the channel as we sail this old girl around the world. We had been high and dry for over seven weeks in the boatyard when the day had finally arrived to start installing our new engine. First the fuel tank was slung up and went in and nervously followed by our sparkling new Yamaha. This was a massive milestone for us and a great feeling of accomplishment. With the engine now in Nanji, it is time to connect all hoses, align and finish off the job completely. This is the exciting bit as everything gets slowly put together. To finish off our drive system here, we need to install the PSS shaft seal. I've got the instructions sitting by just in worst case scenario, I don't know what I'm doing. All men know what they're doing. I need to line this up so this part of the PYI seal will go over onto the stern tube so then these two hose clamps will clamp down. It's important you don't go too far up and you don't shove the stern tube too far up in here because when you compress it, and pull back, the stern tube can bash up in there and then cause damage inside. So you, you just want to make sure that the stern tube goes to the exact end of this little seal, just enough so these two hose clamps go over the top. So slide this down the shaft, coming through until we get it into a nice position. And then we just tighten these couple of hose clamps up. Whenever there's a through hole fitting with direct access of water to the outside, you always use two hose clamps. So the brains of this PSS shaft seal is how it keeps the water out. It's just based on, on friction up against this rotor here. So we'll slide this here down the shaft and then it compresses up against the PSS. And so that little slinky, you pull that in once we've connected the coupling to the gearbox or the Sigma drive to the gearbox. Once that's all connected up, then we can pressurize this to, to pull down on the shaft seal and that's what keeps water out, the seal between this and the rubber. The rotor here on the inside has two O-rings, two rubber O-rings to add for the friction so it doesn't slide up and down the shaft. But to get that on, makes it a little bit more difficult. So we'll use a bit of dishwashing liquid to lubricate. It's good not to use any sort of grease or oil on this sort of stuff. Then when we've got it in place, when we go to tighten it, we'll tighten down on the shaft with these two grub screws. And then we have some Loctite and some two grub screws that go on top of those grub screws to lock them in. So this will never slide up and down the shaft. So that'll always remain in the same position. Keep the water out. So once the Sigma drive is on the end here, the rotor will come down and compress. Hey, you see how it compresses, but I can't hold that. But we need the space to be able to put the Sigma drive on. Anything that rotates needs to be lubricated. So the shaft in this here is lubricated by the seawater. It's got a little seal here, so we'll attach a hose onto this, which will go up and outside of the boat. We know there's always water being lubricated through there. Is there's water coming out of here. In the new stern tube, we had two Novastein cutlass bearings installed. So we have one at the external near the prop and one up this end of the stern tube. So to help guide exactly with the shaft. Previously, when we first installed that bearing in the Solomons in here, that wood to be bearing, we put it in here because we were feeling vibration in the hull, just because of the, the distance of the shaft was two meters or whatever, and only had a cutlass at the back. And that distance was causing the, the shaft to go wobbly. It might've been a little bit of alignment issues and stuff like that, but just by putting that bearing in, we didn't have any more troubles in that, in that scenario. So this time around, we got two Novastein bearings put in. These bad boys will last for ages. Their life expectancy is rated at like four to five times that of a normal bearing. So these bad boys should last the length of Nanji. So we first align the shaft with the coupling that Uncle had. He had a spare on his boat, which is really good. So we, we've aligned the engine perfectly with the coupling. Now we've taken off that coupling and we're gonna put on the Sigma drive. A bit of a process of putting this in as it squeezes and tightens upon the shaft. As we tighten it, it, can, it pulls the shaft three to four millimeters as well. And we need to make it quite precision because of our, our space so we can swing the auto prop between the deadwood and the rudder when we change gear. There's only 10 mil either side of that. So we, we have to be quite accurate. This will probably take a little bit of a time. But the beauty of having a Sigma drive is that it, it counteracts if we make any mistakes. When, when we put the boat back in the water as well, because we are a wooden boat, generally you'd have to realign this again because the boat will change shape and it'll form to what's in the water. So you'd have to realign your coupling again, but with the Sigma drive, there's no need for that. We don't need to be within one eighth of a millimeter. We can use up to three degrees with a Sigma drive. That's how far we can be out. So if you want to have any tips on how to align a motor, get a Sigma drive. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I'm, I'm really slow with that alignment. So let's take this chain block off. Oh the motor's God. in! Motor's in! The motor's in! <laughs> Let's get this out of here! Let's put a floor back in! Get this thing off! 
Retining the Sigma drive, it's like changing the tyre, you just have to go around in a star pattern, so you're working your way around, so you're evenly pulling the shaft up and clamping it down into the Sigma drive. So we've got our star pattern to follow. We've got the auto prop position pretty much where we think it's gonna, the shaft is gonna pull up three to four millimetres, so hopefully that gives us, once the Sigma drive is perfectly tight, that gives us even play on the rudder and the deadwood of the boat. So hopefully my measurements are correct here. Measure 10 times, do this once, because it's really tight and it's really hard to back it off to change it. So we have to make sure we get this Mickey Mouse first time around. So we'll screw in all our studs here, and once we find a, the right one that matches to, our, to the flange of the gearbox, then we'll lock these down with Loctite, put some nylon nuts on the other side to lock it on to here, and then we've got to get the shaft to go up on the inside here. With these studs here, we go through a star pattern and we'll slowly tighten it, which will slowly bring the shaft in, and that's what will clamp down on top of the shaft to hold the shaft in and act as the coupling. Because there's no keyway, if we had to hit anything really hard, the shaft will just spin in there and it's not going to lock it on, so we shouldn't do any damage to our absolutely hulk of a gearbox. We will want to protect everything as best we can, so the shaft can spin in there because all we are doing is it's just basically friction and tightening this right down onto it. So we'll go through the star pattern, which will clamp it down tight onto the shaft. So we'd have to hit like a building. Or a, <laughs> a or building! Like a building that's floating on the surface. <laughs> You know, and, and that'll, that'll only, at the very worst case scenario, the shaft will just spin in there. So we won't do any damage to our engine. Maybe you use a log as a reference? Uh -huh. that's, what I, that's what I hit. A building. A building, yeah. So that didn't just simply slide on, so that's not the right combination. So we'll just have to change around on these holes until we find the one that fits in. That's the winner. That aligns perfectly with the flange. So I'll take these out and put Loctite on them and then thread them right in because we haven't got much space to play around in here. The shaft needs to be right up inside that clamp just, just, just because of the length of the shaft that we've got cut. Brunton's advised using like WD-40 as a lubricant or something like that but I like to use lanolin on everything because it's natural and it lubricates much better than WD-40. So we've got some lanolin. With the engine fully installed, now we need to run everything else around it. So we're running the exhaust first. If you remember on Old Smokey, we had a riser that came out of the mixing elbow, so off the back of the heat exchanger, it went up and down, and then that was all lagging. Whereas this one is a little bit different because it's it's level with the water line, so we're able to do this. Otherwise, we'd have to have some sort of riser as well put onto this. So I don't want to deal with lagging or risers or any of that crap anymore. So it's very important we locate this water lock in the correct position. So this will stop any water flowing back into the motor. All the water that will be captured in the exhaust between uh, the elbow and here, we, we plan to minimise that length of run so we'll minimise the amount of water will end up back in this water lock and this water lock to minimise the amount of water potentially to here to go back into the engine. So we need to put this at least have a run from the mixing elbow at least 30 centimetres and it needs to be at least 5 centimetres lower than the bottom of the mixing elbow. Nanji's got a very shallow bilge, so there's no room under the motor where you can put it. The lowest point in the boat where we can put it and we still have that run of at least 30 centimetres and below the mixing elbow. We've opted to put it in the bilge here, we've had to cut a bit of floor and we'll have to make a little step here. This is the shower. This is the shower, so we're going to have a nice place to put your leg up to scrub your knees and everything you know now. So we'll make a little step in here, just to hide this, but the most important thing is to stop water getting back into the engine. So that's what this water lock is going to do. But we need to drill a hole, we're going to drill a hole here. Went and bought myself a nice new through hole. So we'll have to drill a hole here, we'll run the exhaust off the mixing elbow on the engine, do a little curve onto here onto the water lock. We'll then go from here, do a little right angle up to the riser, and then out. We've had to cut a whole new exhaust hole too, hey? Yeah, well, I'll have to cut a whole new hole through the boat. I've covered off all the orifices so we can't get anything sucked back up. We don't want to get any dust in the engine. Might well, should have the vacuum running so we don't get any dust on Fang, but I oh, will. You get that with big jobs. find places for the gooseneck here. This needs to be as high above water level as possible. 
And basically it's going to be up underneath here in the man cover. This is where I used to keep all my... The man cave. All my boat lubricants and all that sort of crap. So we're going to mount it up in here and then we'll run the outlet down and drill a new hole inside of Nanji down there for the exhaust outlet. We need to mount this so we had to take out a... do a bit of modifications in here. And I've got my second best tool because there's a couple of strip screws. The persuader. <laughs> Two types of people that own boats. The people that are afraid to drill holes and the people that ain't. There's also two other types of people that own boats. People that hire people to do stuff and others that just GSD. The extractor. Going in. Mostly underestimated how much exhaust hose we were gonna run. It's when you start curving it around corners and that it really adds up pretty quickly though. So we've really only got this much hose left. It's either that or we sit here for a couple of weeks and wait for it to get delivered and I'm not too keen on that. So we're just gonna deal with what we've got. And that's going out the hole. Is that really gonna go like that? Yep, yeah. a little something like that. It's gonna be tight. Perfect, perfect length. It's about a metre and a half further forward than when our previous outlet was. We're reading up about it. We had a walk around the yard and had a good suss at where all the outlets are on other boats. Generally they are at the back, but... Uh, is that so it doesn't dutch you out in the cockpit? No, we're kind of thinking it's more of where the motor's positioned. It's just so it's the shortest run, because like, there isn't too many centre cockpits here, so most motors would be at the back of their boats, so a lot of the exhaust outlets are right on the stern or the transom. Um, but there was one centre cockpit that was basically, the exit point was like directly on their beam. There's only two other centre cockpits in the yard here, so we haven't really got a lot of, a lot of things to check out. but. Yeah, reading about it, it doesn't matter. As long as it's above that waterline, it's the biggest concern. It'd just mean that it's going to be more underwater, do you think? I Being just further up the boat? No, no. No, not necessarily. Because not necessarily. Like, they say when they're on the transom, it's like in a following sea, they worry about water breaking up. I'm worried about heeling over, and not, like when you're sailing up wind yeah. or beam two. But, yeah, that's what I was thinking. But because of the gooseneck, the gooseneck will stop any water coming in, and that's up as high as it can be in Nanji anyway, so that's like over a metre above the waterline, so no water is going to come in because we got the gooseneck up so high. Let's drill a hole. Because we've got a beautiful paint job on the outside, the last thing I want to do is start ripping and tearing at that. By punching a drill through this way, it'll probably flake out the paint on the other side, so we'll drill the pilot hole first from on this on the inside so we know exactly where we want the hole to be, and then I'll go on the outside and punch it back through. The hull's pretty thick, so hopefully this drill bit's long enough to get through. I don't think it will be, but time will tell. Just drilling holes through my boat. No pressure. Don't you dare screw this up! Look away, drill! Oh my god, Tom. I see light! How thick do you reckon the hull was there? Uh, yeah, it's probably about just under an inch thick. It's like, yeah, probably an inch thick. Nanji's built. Right, let's go see where that is on the outside. Yeah. Was that a daunting feeling, Benita? Um, actually, no, it wasn't that that. Yes, it was so daunting. I can't believe you just drill, drilled a hole in the boat. Oh my god. You don't even care. Come on. <laughs> there it is. So it's only going to be just above the waterline. Is that bad? Oh my god. Yeah, drill above it. <laughs> You're <fucking laughs> <up>. <laughs> Didn't. <laughs> 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 you, you measured it. Oh how many times? Oh my god! So where you had it now, before. you really got to measure. So where I had it before. Unless you could just use high. that and like drill there, like that being the outside of the. You got to you got to measure your. I have to make sure that that's that that cuts yeah. on the very bottom. We're good. You could use that as the bottom of the circle. Yeah. 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 Use that as the bottom of the yeah. circle. Yeah. Good thinking. Think yeah. Uh, yeah, I was stuck. Come on! I was marking the bottom! <laughs> this guy! <laughs> right. Oh well. <laughs> so that's how you do it. <laughs> Improvise from your mistakes. How you doing, Benita? Protecting the paint job from Yosh's extreme demolition. Then that is it in the middle of your thing? Oh. The hole. Mm. Set there. Like that. 
reckon? Mm-hmm. Well, because we need to bolt the, the flange in, we could use that hole as the bottom bolt hole, which will lift it up another, another inch. That's a good height then. About four inches above your water line there. Make it right. Yeah. 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 A lot higher. A lot higher. About there, yeah. Yeah. Right about there. That angle? Yeah. Nice. Having trouble with the drill? Yeah, Bosch have got a nice little rot like Mac. They've got their own little attachments to go into drill bits, so. It's not sitting perfectly plumb. You can, you can get it there, it just takes a bit of effort. Woo! Wow, there it goes! Oh. <laughs> Hello! It is quite far down the boat. Yeah, well, Yosh was able to fix up his little whoopsie, so. He's still in the good book. Oh, you're gonna hold that one against me. <laughs> Look at that, I centered the hole perfectly as well. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> We're thinking of cutting off a little bit off the end because it's quite it's sticking out quite a lot, but ah. Ah, get it off guys. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Take good. Hello legends! Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed that episode of Sailing Nanji. Yeah, it's a bit noisy out here, it's quite windy and we've got something going on with our bimini, so just hang in there. Yeah, we got a bit of weather guys, so sorry for the awkwardness. Uh, it was awesome uh, plumbing up the engine and getting everything ready to start it. We're going to be starting it in the next episode, so subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Yeah, once we reach 100,000 subscribers, we plan to donate 500 bucks to One Tree Planted to plant 500 trees to yep. help combat climate change. So get on board. It's a good, good, good program they run there. Uh, thank you always to our patrons. We've got some new patrons that have jumped on board. We have Kai Bars, John, Jim, Simon, John McGee, Cooper, and James has chucked a bit in the PayPal account. Thank you guys so much. It really helps us um, to be able to keep Nancy floating and us filming. So. Thank you, legends. The sea trials coming up in the videos very soon, but at the moment we're just gearing up and getting ready for our first big passage, so we might be out of touch in a couple of weeks. Yeah, we'll see how we go. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Cheers, legends. See ya. Catch ya. Fang is slowly and starting to look a lot more like a motor, but one that works anyway. Like connecting like the, the sea strainer and the, putting the anti-siphon on. And This is the Yanmar anti-rust that's going in the heat exchanger. Oh, that's a nice. Yosh and I just went and picked up some fuel to run the brand new engine for the first time. Just put these first splashes of diesel into our brand new tank. Whoa. Here we have a little bit of a problem. We just started the engine and it started for like a few seconds and then it turned itself off. So we're just trying to work out what the problem is. Alright, here goes nothing. <laughs>